Hi everyone. Over the past few weeks, I created a set of YouTube videos that discuss a few ways to help solving the poem. Today I'm creating a video because of some of the feedback I, I get on both YouTube and Facebook, and I want to try to address some of the things that people have been uh, talking about. It seems that people are having problems trying to put some of the stuff I discussed down to practical use. Well, I want to begin by saying that at first, all I did was read the book like everyone else does. I read the poem, read the book, just straight through. And it's pretty easy when you read the book to spot a lot of the aberrations. But th the problem that you're going to face sooner or later is there's an overwhelming number of them. Uh, see, Forrest placed a lot of aberrations in the book, and I believe that, that many of them are not hints. Uh, remember, he only tells the truth 85% of the time. And I think that, that he did this purposely to throw anyone off who just reads the book casually. Or perhaps they try to shortcut the system by looking for the aberrations directly. Because, as again, they're pretty easy to spot. You know, 36-inch bathtub, uh, Robert Redford story. You know, there's quite a few uh, issues that come up in there. And people end up in rabbit holes. And that, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people, including the poem purist, avoid the book when possible. Because they're trying to avoid that. And that's the same reason they, they avoid everything else. So... I was faced with that same issue, clearly, and last year I decided that I'm going to go back to the poem, and I still also wanted to use the thrill of the chase. I own all of his books, but I'm only using the thrill of the chase this time because that's really all you should need. Forrest says that you need um, the poem, which of course is in Thrill of the Chase, and he said good reference material would be the thrill of the chase. And you need Google Earth or, or a good map, right? So technically, all I need is Google Earth and the poem and the thrill of the chase. And I should be able to solve this thing, the, uh, you know, and avoid everything else. And, and again, I'm not saying that there are not hints in the scrapbooks and stuff like that. Uh, there seem to be, but it also seems that they really don't come into play until you already have a pretty workable solve. So your best bet is to avoid them in the beginning because, it, trust me, it's only going to cause problems. I've been working on this for four years now, and um, I had uh, oh, many failures, and I've been getting a lot better at it. And I noticed that I'm getting better because I'm avoiding all that other stuff. So I, I, I tried to come up with a way last year that I can find the hints but avoid the rabbit holes now, I mean, it, it's, it sounds great, but it, it's, it's a really hard thing to do. But I, I tried to stick with it and find a way. And the first thing I did was just try it looking for hints in the book directly, um, stuff that was not so obvious. And I found a couple of places where they were, but I still really didn't feel comfortable with it. And that's where I started to look at, at the poem. And, you know, Forrest says the poem is a map. So I thought that maybe it is, and I, and I already did two videos about this, so I'm not going to expand on it, but maybe it is a table of contents. It's a TOC, T-O-C for short, table of contents uh, for the book. Because as we know, there is no table of contents in that book, right? So what, what better way would there be if that was true? And, you know, does the poem actually lead you there? And... I went down that path, and my videos based uh, the table of contents is pretty much based all around that. Um, I, I show enough in those videos to at least get you started. I don't go into depth on it because, well, I mean, it would be giving away a lot of information that I'm not prepared to give away yet. And but I still wanted to help, so I wanted to give out enough to at least get you started. Um, so again. I think that the book is our access. And it, just reading the poem itself, if you read the first stanza, again, it seems like a riddle that can be answered by the words memoir. You know, he's alone in a memoir. His, his, his treasures are bold in a memoir, and so on, right? So here I'm using just the poem and the book. And I tried, as I said, a whole bunch of steps and most of these, of course, involve counting to specific pages and locations. Um, 
you know, I feel that even just reading the book off the top of your head kind of hints at doing this, you know. Remember in the book where it talks about Frosty, Frosty is a ruler, okay. How about Borders Bookstore? Why was Forrest amazed, okay, when the girl knew exactly where the books were that he was looking for? Well, <laughs> I mean, just like a library, a bookstore has things categorized, and then it has them organized by shelf and row, right? So maybe the book is organized the same way, except instead of shelves and rows, you have chapters and pages, okay? Now, look at important literature at that sentence, what Forrest said. So that little lady probably knew where every book was in that whole store. And when we arrived at the exact spot, she pulled down two books and just handed them to me and walked away. She tossed back her thick braids and acted like they had purpose. Well, that just it seems like an odd thing for him to say. I mean, she tossed her braids back with as if they had purpose, uh, you know, and he's amazed that she walked to the exact spot. She knew where it was, right? That's how books are, are normally. And then now, so you get inside the book itself, since we're, we're talking about a specific book, The Thrill of the Chase. Again, The Thrill of the Chase has no table of contents. It's missing. So... Let's, what about ways to measure things? Okay, how do bakers measure? They measure with spoons, cups, things like that. How about carpenters? They measure with rulers and tape measures. Okay, so how would you measure a book? Well, it's easy. You measure a book by chapters, pages, paragraphs, sentences, words, even the characters. Okay, how would you measure the poem? Well, you'd measure the poem by stanzas, lines, uh, you measure it the same way, but maybe you also want to put um, syllable counts because poetry is like music, and syllables uh, create the melody. It creates the rhythm that the poem is going with. So it might make sense, you know, maybe maybe syllables are used, right? So basically, you know, Forrest says he never misled us. A lot of people are going to say, well, the poem should work on its own, and it does. Technically, you don't need the hints, but... Without the hints, let's face it, that poem is really vague. It could take you forever to solve it. Okay, so Forrest tells us constantly the best way to come up with a solution is to read the poem and the book over and over. He tells us that the Internet's for entertainment. Scrapbooks, Q&A, videos, forums, blogs, you know, even YouTube. There's a lot of good info out there, but it's also buried in rabbit holes, and a lot of it's intermingled with failed solutions. Unfortunately, as time goes on, the Internet gets more and more incorrect stuff out there, and it only makes matters worse. So why not do what Forrest said? Stick with the book, The Thrill of the Chase. In there is the poem. With just The Thrill of the Chase and a map, you should be able to solve this thing. Okay? Forrest says don't mess with the poem. That's another thing. People can come back to me and say, well, you know, this is ciphers and, you know, word counting. And Forrest said you don't need any of that. Straightforward. And that's 100% correct. The poem is straightforward. You don't need to do this. But where did he say that you, the hints are straightforward? In fact, he tells us the opposite. He tells us that the hints, the chapters that contain the hints, are not deliberately placed to aid the searcher. So obviously there's a method to the madness. There's a method, there's a way, and to me it's counting, that's going to put you in the right locations. But you're not just randomly counting things. You got to understand the poem, okay? <laughs> so let's say that my theory is wrong. I mean, we should still consider all of this stuff. It's not going to hurt you to try it, okay? And my latest um, video is about diagramming the poem. The whole idea behind that is to get a better understanding of the poem. You want to understand the words he chose. What word types are they, verb, noun, adjective, the context in which he used them, and why did he choose those specific verb or words? Um, you know, there's no way that understanding the poem better is going to hurt you. It's only going to help you in the long run to pick better definitions that are more likely to be part of a, a correct solve. You know, what makes more sense? Trying to assume from the beginning that the poem is grammatically correct. And then you go through it and isolate what each word is. If you find any grammar mistakes, don't change it. 
Forrest must have that mistake there for a reason. Your job is to find out what is that reason. That might be a hint in itself, you know. So you start out assuming that everything is correct. And basically, you're going to go through there, learn all the word types, and find out if there's any mistakes. There's no way that that's going to hurt you. There's no way that's going to create bias any more than randomly open a dictionary and picking out any definition. Um, That's probably more likely to create bias because you don't even have grammar to back you up if he did follow the, the grammar rules. And remember, he's the writer. He could have broken the rules, but we are the reader. We have to read it the way Forrest intended, not the way we intend the way Forrest intended us to read it. So let's assume for now that the grammar is correct. You might want to go ahead and, and take a look at that video that I just made the other day regarding a uh, diagram in the poem. And then you also want to go back and check out my table of contents. As, you know, I called it, um, is the poem a talk for the thrill of the chase? Talk being T-O-C. By T-O-C, I mean table of contents. I should probably change the uh, description at some point. Um, so anyway, I don't, I don't see how all that's going to hurt. And, you know, I'm going to keep this video short. I just wanted to make, make those points and address some of the issues that people are pointing out. And as I said, it appears that counting is involved and the poem is involved and the poem will take you to the hints. Okay. So anyway... Have a great day and please subscribe and like this if you like my video and also pass it around for me so I can get uh, more views and hopefully draw more interest. If things keep going the way they are, I'll probably also continue with the sentence diagramming and other videos as I uh, see important as, as we go along in time. So anyway, and also have a, have a good uh, Memorial Day weekend and if you're know anybody that's a veteran or unfortunately lost anybody that's a veteran. Um, You have my sympathy and I want to thank you for your service to our country. Thanks and have a great day. Goodbye.